Okay, why don't you do the greeting? <laughs> Come on, Chevelle. Why don't you do the greeting? Good morning, everybody. There you go. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. It's November 7, no, 18. Already, November 18 already. It's a Monday morning. And here we are doing our gospel commentary for Monday. And the gospel is coming from St. Luke. This is a very nice, a very nice gospel. One of my uh, favorites. <laughs> Everybody says favorite gospel, right? So I can also say that only because it, it, uh, it, within this gospel, we learn a very beautiful uh, prayer from the blind man Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, okay, Bar Timaeus, Bar means son of. So the son of Timaeus, who was a blind man, and he would just sit by, uh, you know, the side of the road, begging because he couldn't do much as a blind man. And let's listen to what happened while he was there one day sitting by the roadside of Jericho uh, begging. So as Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. And hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Okay, so there was a commotion in the town uh, when, when Jesus arrived. People were, uh, people were excited, people were gathering, and, uh, and they were all excited to see Jesus. So he shouted. He knew who Jesus was. Okay? Uh, Bartimaeus must have been a very uh, uh, good Jewish student that he knew the, uh, the scriptures and he knew who Jesus was going to be and who, who he was actually uh, uh, according to what the prophets have, have uh, announced to them. He knew that Jesus was the son of God, the son of David, the promised Messiah. Okay? And that is why he says, he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And the people walking in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. Hey, shut up. Hey, shut up. What are you, what's your business shouting at our guest? What's your business having to uh, heckle our guest today? Shut up. Just continue begging there. Anyway, you... You can't see him, so why bother, right? But he kept calling out all the more. Son of David, have pity on me. Son of David, have pity on me. Then Jesus stopped and ordered that he be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? You think Jesus didn't know? <laughs> Do you think Jesus didn't know what Bartimaeus wanted? Right? He, Jesus, who told his apostles, My Father in heaven knows what you need even before you ask him. Right? God knows what you need even before you ask him. But why does Jesus have to ask Bartimaeus, What do you want me to do for you? You know why? You know why Jesus asked? What do you think? Why did Jesus have to ask even if he already knew? <coughs> huh? Because Jesus was teaching Bartimaeus how to pray. And how to pray with humility. How to acknowledge. Jesus was trying to teach uh, Bartimaeus how to acknowledge what he wants to ask for. Jesus wants to impress upon us that although God knows what we need, we have to know what we need. 
we have to be cognizant of our own needs and what we need Jesus for. Eh? That is a very, very important lesson here about prayer. When we pray, we have to understand what we need. We have to know what is good for us to an extent. We have to ask with humility because knowing what we need is a sign of humility. Knowing what we want to pray for and what we want to, what we want to ask God for is an indication that we have done our own examination and that we had uh, um, somehow discerned this good that we want to ask God for. Eh? And that is why the line of questioning is very profound when Jesus asks him, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus is testing whether this man had done any kind of uh, reflection on his own needs. And with humility comes to Jesus and asks him exactly what he thinks he needs. What do you want me to do for you? He replied very simply. He replied, Lord, that I may see. Domine ut vidiam. I like the Latin phrase a lot. Domine ut vidiam. Lord, domine, that I may see. Wasn't it obvious? You're blind. What kind of what? What else is a miracle that you might the blind man might blind man might need, right? Domine ut vidiam, Lord, that I may see. And Jesus told him, "Have sight. Your faith has saved you." He immediately received the sight and followed him, giving glory to God. When they saw this, all the people gave praise to God. Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Have pity on me. Let me see. Ut vidiam. Domine ut vidiam. Such a beautiful prayer that I encourage everybody to say many times. Many times. You know why? Because there are many things in this world that we don't understand. There are many things about ourselves that we don't understand. There are many things about God and how God is dealing with us that we don't understand. There are so many things that our parents tell us that we don't understand. <laughs> right? We don't. That's a, that's a very uh, a clear uh, illustration. The, the, the many things that we, your parents, tell you are not very easy to understand. Why? Why? Well, because perhaps your lack of maturity wouldn't allow you to understand the good behind what we tell you to do. It takes a little bit more of maturity and understanding for you to realize that the things that we tell you and teach you are good for you. Well, the same thing is true with God. There are many things that God allows to happen in our lives that many times we do not understand. We do not understand. And it's therefore very nice to pray, Ut vidiam, let me see, let me understand. Lord, that I might see. Lord, that I might recognize your will in this circumstance that you have allowed to happen in my life today. Lord, help me see your will. What other applications would this prayer have? Many times we don't understand ourselves. Right? We don't know what's going on with us. We don't know why we can't acquire a virtue. We don't know why sometimes it's so difficult to get rid of, of, uh, of, um, of our shortcomings, of our bad tendencies, of our bad habits. It's so hard. Why? Because many times we don't understand why we have to correct ourselves. So we have to pray, Lord, help me see. Help me see what's wrong with me. Help me understand what I need to change. Because I couldn't see what's wrong with me. <coughs> <coughs> A 
And you know why we could not see what's wrong with us many times? Because of pride. We are too proud to recognize what's wrong with us. We're too proud to recognize our shortcomings. We're too proud to even, even accept that there is something wrong with us. Right? Many times, many times this comes up in arguments with, between two people. Right? When two people are accusing each other of, of their shortcomings, inevitably one of them would always say, Oh, really? Yeah, when did I do that? Really? When did that happen? When did I say that? <laughs> Many times, the reason why that person does not recognize what he or she is being told is because he's too proud. Pro too proud to see his own mistakes. Too proud to recognize his own shortcomings. Too proud to understand his sins. And therefore, it is important for us to pray, Ut vidiam, Lord, that I might see. Please help me understand these things that these people are telling me is wrong with me. Help me understand it. That I might see. Another beautiful thing to, to another beautiful place to be, be praying this prayer is when we do the examination of conscience at night. See, maybe we can add this little prayer after we pray the prayer to the, the Holy Spirit. See? We can always add at the end of that prayer, Domine ut vidiam, Lord, that I might see what things I need to examine myself today. See, at the end of a long day, we, at least in our own household, we do the examination of conscience, a very beautiful, pious, uh, Catholic act and activity that... Uh, I would encourage everybody to do here in our own home. We do it every night together before we hit the sack. And we ask ourselves a few questions to help us examine ourselves. And maybe uh, when we start that by praying the prayer of the Holy Spirit. for uh, We ask for enlightenment from the Holy Spirit. But maybe we can add the prayer of Bartimaeus. Okay, starting tonight. Who's going to lead tonight? Okay, Sophia, it's Monday. Let's start. Let's add that prayer. I think it's a very nice prayer to add. When we prepare the, for the examination of conscience, right? We can, we can say, Domine ut vidiam. Domine ut vidiam. Lord, that I may see. Okay. Let us remember this very beautiful prayer. Especially when we are beset with confusion. When we encounter difficulty of making decisions. Okay? Those among you who are working, for example. You, you encounter plenty of decision points during the day. Okay? This is a very beautiful short prayer you can pray. Lord, that I might see what is the right course of action in this crossroad. Lord, that I might see what is the best decision I should make given this particular dilemma or given this particular problem that I'm facing today. Lord, that I might see. Okay? Domine ut vidiam. So, very good. That's it for us, folks. We're off to Mass. Off to Mass tomorrow, we are celebrating the first year of Eva. Where is Eva, 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 Eva? Where is Eva? There is Eva. Hi, Eva. Hi, Eva. Say hi, Eva. Say hi. There you go. She's saying hi. Clap, clap your hands. Clap your hands. Oh, no. I'm too busy with my new dog. Ah. <laughs> Okay, everybody, thank you very much for joining us this morning for the Gospel Commentary. Um, please, pray, please pray for Eva. Tomorrow she's going to be one. Okay, ah, ah. <laughs> okay, have a good day, everybody. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.